everybody. You're doing good. We hope you are because this is episode 171 of Bite That's Weekly Wrestling Podcast, the place where we break down the latest happenings about the WWE Raw SmackDown Live 205 Live. Live? A lot of live happening in the world of wrestling. We also got our predictions for the latest SmackDown Live pay-per-view TLC happening on this edition of the podcast, which is available every single Wednesday night on most podcast platforms. If you enjoy the podcast, drop a five-star review on iTunes and send us a tweet, bite that cast, let us know, hey... I reviewed you. I said some crazy things and that we can bring that up possibly on the show. We also got the YouTube channel with a bunch of different stuff, square round tables, gameplay videos. And if you want early access and you want to see our mugs on screen or on your phone as we record the podcast, you can do so for just one snap mirror. That's one dollar. All you got to do is head on over to patreon.com slash bite that for all the information. It's raw, it's uncut, and you can see Keith. My name is Juan Velas. I am from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Joining me as always for this predictions episode for SmackDown Live, I got Keith Poshik from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, Ryan McNulty from Boston, Massachusetts. We, we survived Black Friday. It's, it, it was over. I mean, Keith, it, it didn't really affect you in the same way that it did for us, but... No. Y'all are so crazy. Yeah. Like, I woke up Friday morning and read the news, and there were shootings at a Macy's somewhere in America. Like, what we are you guys involved. doing? Well, Ryan, me, I'm, 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 speaking, I'm speaking to your country right now. Okay, what okay. are you guys doing? Like, I understand, like, a deal on a blender or something, but... Uh, to shoot another human being over? Hey, man, Jesus. that blender, it's like KitchenAid or something. Because yeah. I got a KitchenAid mixer, and it's great. I should have got that Hulk Hogan blender. You know, he <laughs> had the Thunder blender or whatever the hell he was going to endorse instead of the George Foreman grill. Whoa, yeah, he missed right. an He missed an opportunity there. That's a there. deep cut. But uh, you know Oof. how I survived Black Friday? I literally didn't leave the house. That's a because really I good knew, first step. I knew it just wasn't worth it. Any like I think I went to grab some groceries because I knew that would be safe, but I did not touch any store that would sell anything that people would want to purchase for Christmas. Smart There's an man. amazing gif online of Black Friday in Canada where it's a Best Buy and everybody's just walking in single file all nicely or the staff is clapping and cheering as everybody comes in. Like, that's what Black Friday for me is like. Y'all are nuts. Yeah, in my case, I did all my shopping online. I finally got the new parts for my new computer. It was it cost a couple of dollars there. That hurt a little bit, but they haven't even shipped. And I got those things on... No, I actually got those on Thursday. It wasn't even Black Friday. Amazon is yet to ship that. So hopefully... You know, I get that soon because I want to do a lot of good stuff with that computer, including some new editing stuff. I want to experiment maybe for uh, for 2017. But, Ooh. you know, this is a very good week. I've been very happy because last week I badly messed up the raw poll there. And, you know, people gave it three out of four. SmackDown, it was also three out of four. We spoke very positively about things. Of course, can some things improve? When can't they, right? That's the whole point of watching a show. And then I was talking about it, but I really got the feeling that there's something going on. WWE is being edgier with Raw, and they're actually able to do it in a different way than SmackDown. So let's get right to the Raw versus SmackDown polls. Remember, Bite That Cast is the place where we pu publish them right after each respective show. So with Raw, we got the majority once again, but a higher number. We got 46% with pretty good, and then... Only 22% gave it four out of four excellent. So you see that almost everybody was in agreement. Raw was a pretty damn good show. And then when we change it to SmackDown, the numbers go even higher. So 52% out of you, the crazy awesome listeners, gave it a three out of four, saying it was pretty good. Then four out of four with fantastic. And then like the one out of fours, people are not feeling that right now. And I got to agree, you know, even though this is wrestling overload, we got three hours of wrestling on Monday. Now we got three hours of wrestling on Tuesdays between SmackDown Live and Why? 205 Live. Why do they have to do this to us? <laughs> oh, man, I'm, st but, I'm still not sure, but yeah. The great thing is 
if it's good content that you're consuming, it doesn't feel like three hours. And that's been what's so nice about Raw the last couple of weeks. It barely feels like it's the slog that it normally is because they are putting on great content, great material. And yeah, like you mentioned, Raw and SmackDown were both great this week. I I never really thought about your point, how they're kind of making Raw a different show from SmackDown. But you're totally right. SmackDown seems a lot more like to tr- the traditional wrestling show that we're used to seeing throughout the years, where Raw is becoming something different right now. I can't exactly put my word on, or like put my mind to it, but or... my finger on it. That's what I was going That's for. Good. Thank what you. Will but Keith it put is definitely it. changing. Find out next time on oh, Dragon Ball Z. Know. <laughs> and when you say when you say rest, traditional wrestling show, Keith, I would actually say not traditional in the WWE sense, at least for me. I'd say traditional in the sense that they are doing the Ring of Honor. They're doing like more... It's it's a wrestling show on SmackDown, right? Like they're not focusing... I mean, yeah, you got the Wyatt family, you got Slater and, and the Man Beast and some things like that happening, but it's a very straightforward show, but in, in a very good way. And it's digestible in two hours with Raw the characters are becoming more over the top. You know, even guys like Jericho and Owens and a bunch of different interactions. You know, we're going to get to the Paul Heyman promo, which made Raw just that much better for me. Uh, What did you think, Ryan? What was your favorite thing uh, maybe that Raw had to offer for you? Raw this week? uh, Well, obviously, we had an excellent main event. Uh, Just commenting on the whole Raw versus SmackDown thing. Raw has had a really good string of weeks, and we can see with the polls that even though SmackDown still usually wins, the gap is closing, and Raw is maybe finally finding its footing. Um, SmackDown reminds me of sort of the old school Ruthless Aggression era type of SmackDown show, the way that it's structured, and Raw for a while seemed like it was just throwing a bunch of crap at the wall to see what sticks. It was bad. (laughs) Yeah, but now it's really finding its footing. Uh, This week... Uh, segments for Raw, I'd have to give it to the Bar Brawl. I love that we're getting some more out of, out of the, you know, the typical arena segments. So even though it was a little corny, uh, just the Sheamus and, uh, Cesaro Bar Brawl was just really fun and something different, something we don't normally see every week. And another thing I liked was Seth Rollins and Chris Jericho. The, the brawl in the parking lot. Another type of scenario we haven't seen in so long. That type of stuff, just just a, like a new scenery, just really freshens things up and makes the show more digestible. So I really appreciated those two, even if maybe the main event was kind of the show stealer of the night. It makes you realize how often, even though it's there in every single arena, how often they don't go to the parking lot. At least and make it memorable. That's uh, that's what made that so great. Totally. They really should. Because one of the things we can play in here is 50-50 booking, right? How do you solve that? Take the action out of the ring. Don't even have the match. If you want to have this match where it's just the sake of violence where, okay, Keith is going to kick Ryan's ass this week and then vice versa, they can do that backstage. And then it's not a match. And then it's not, hey, Keith beat Ryan. Like he has a victory over him. No. Because then when you get to the ring, you have all that pent up anger. Yeah, you can it's, still make a yeah. guy look good without having to get pinfall wins over someone by just winning beatdowns. And it's simple. Like, I marked the hell out when Rollins did the whole thing where he went through the car and then beat Jericho on the other side. I'm like, hey, that's pretty that's damn smart. cool. It's really smart, too. Yeah, it's it's logic because... Otherwise, they would just do the whole loop around the car. Maybe it would never end. Rollins said, uh uh, that's not what I'm doing. I just want to beat you up, Jericho. So, yeah, it's a three hour show. So, it's nice to get a change of scenery every once in a while instead of looking at arena, backstage area, arena, backstage area over and over and over again. No, definitely. And getting to that bar brawl, now there are things that I wasn't a huge fan of, and it still has to do really with how. Seamus and Cesaro deliver this because I keep saying it. They're doing the hell no thing. I get it. But man, what they were saying, it cannot be more. Hey, remember when I used to hate you and hate you? I wonder if they're going to get along now. I wonder if something is about to happen right now where everything that they're saying is magically going to be turned around. No way. No way. It actually happened. But it was still enjoyable, right? It's just I, I hate to nitpick that, but. I, Acting in wrestling yeah. goes a long way. 
it, it's a and it's an actual issue that we've had with both both guys in the past outside of this. But the fact that they're doing stuff like this and they're beating up the whole independent roster from that state was uh, yeah. was very enjoyable. <laughs> Although, okay, now this is a real nitpick. Why were all these beers already magically poured and just ready for them to be handed over? What kind of bar does that? I don't know. Somebody's maybe, maybe. got some pre-planning bartending yeah. going on. If you got like, you know, $2 Bud Lights at a bar, maybe they got them ready to go. Pre-poured. Yeah, maybe it was happy hour. Maybe they were just planning ahead. It would probably be terrible if a bar did that, but, you yeah, know. Yeah, it'll be warm and gross. That's not a bar I would go to, but then again, I don't go to any bar, so who am I to really say, uh, talk about that, right? Now, the other thing, we, we got to go with the Foley update. We usually save the Foley thing for last, but I want to bring this up now because, in contrast, we got that awesome main event, even though it was weird, right, how Sasha and Charlotte had a match, but then they booked it for the end of the show again. And even we were kind of going back and forth, like, come on now, do you really got to stretch this so far? But hey, it paid off. Now with Sami Zayn, they're doing this thing where McFoley is giving him, you know, crap stating that, uh, you know, you can't beat him. So that's why I finished the match. And I'll credit cage side seats on Twitter. I'm going to paraphrase, but Foley as a character, doesn't even make sense. Like, forget about the script and all that. Why is he doing things like with Charlotte and Sasha, the Hell in a Cell? He makes the match, but then he's like, oh, no, this is going to tear your life apart. He makes a match between Sami Zayn and Braun Strowman and goes, no, I had to stop it. Why? You made the match. You should <laughs> know better than to do that if you know Sami Zayn is not capable of beating Braun. Maybe Mick Foley is the deepest character in wrestling history where he has some form of schizophrenia going on where like one part of Mick Foley is making the matches and then the other part like, no, is, no. has the conscience. I'm making all of this up and it's super it not would true. Be and nice. it's probably just a matter of it doesn't make any sense. It would be nice if they ever thought that far along, but they don't. And the real reason <laughs> is... Because it doesn't make sense to have Foley play this character and still be the matchmaker. If you're going to do this, at least have Stephanie make the matches and then Foley comes in and is sympathetic. Because otherwise it really doesn't make sense at all. That being said, wasn't it great to not have Stephanie on Raw? That was a breath of fresh air. I enjoy that so much. I wonder much. why we liked it so much. <laughs> yeah, It's insane though. Like, not to sound smarky, not any of those crazy terms, I felt relieved. And this is like in many TV shows where they try, like, a Family Matters tried to add some new characters after a while. That 70s show tried to add new characters after a while. And whenever those characters weren't in an episode, I was so happy. I was like, hey, this is the thing that I actually want to watch. So I would not mind if Stephanie took, like, a five to six year sabbatical. From WWE. So let me ask, because we just talked about these problems with Mick Foley and then happy with Stephanie McMahon not being around. Is Stephanie necessary to almost fix the problems with Mick Foley? Is it worth her being around to have that make more sense if they actually went that far with it? Like, is Stephanie McMahon not being there actually a detriment to the overall program? Well, who uh, else program? is going to emasculate him? You know? <laughs> can't argue with that Yeah, statement. Pretty much that. It it's necessary because I feel like Stol uh, Stoli <laughs> Foley's story arc is basically that Stephanie is going to ruin him. And he'll probably eventually get fired. Stoli almost made me choke my wall. Stoli? <laughs> Isn't that like... <laughs> that's some brand of something. It's gotta be. We'll look it up afterwards. The follow-up that I want to get to now is the Paul Heyman situation. So... Yeah, you know, we, we couldn't make up our minds whether that was a good choice or not with what happened between Brock and Goldberg. But even last week, we were kind of just going, hey, we haven't heard anything back from Lesnar and Heyman. And I am very happy that they're going down the route that I wanted them to go, which is redemption story. And my God, is Paul Heyman a great storyteller as far as just he didn't shave the little details to make you go. Like, this man is in a deep state of depression. He was teary-eyed the entire time. And instead of doing the traditional Paul Heyman thing, he just goes, we messed up. Like, that was on us, not going to justify, because then I'm going, oh, man, 
if he is doing that, that means that Brock Lesnar is not even pissed off. I mean, he wants to just kill the entire roster at this point. And when he said he was going to be in the Rumble, like that right there, the Rumble is going to be an awesome match. I don't think either guy is going to win. But the fact that we're going to get that stare down and I'm just imagining the whole roster definitely afraid of Goldberg and Lesnar in the ring. I'm even picturing them like walking off, like just leaving. Nope. You guys do your thing and then we'll come back. That alone tells a great story. And we are still two months away. How crazy is that? Going to be so good. Paul Heyman sold this thing so well. And really after Paul Heyman segment, it made me very okay with the um, with the outcome of the Brock Lesnar Bill Goldberg match because it basically revitalized Brock Lesnar as a character going from the whole angle of now Brock Lesnar has something to prove we're sitting here like oh my god I can't wait to see Brock in the Royal Rumble because he could rip a man's head off if he is as desperate as Heyman is claiming him to be and it really adds new life to the Brock Lesnar character than having the situation of, okay, he beat Goldberg on to the next guy. Oh, I guess he's in the Royal Rumble. Maybe he'll win. Maybe he'll lose. Whatever. But even though you know him or Goldberg are probably not going to win the Rumble, it creates a hell of a story for it. And that's probably worth the price of admission when it comes to the match alone. Never mind every other thing going on with the other 28 other people. Just those two alone are selling the Royal Rumble. And it's great. And it's happened from one promo with Paul Heyman. And that's the craziest yeah, part. Yeah, it didn't even involve away. the actual guys wrestling. No, because Goldberg just did his thing. And we're like, OK, cool. He's going to be there. I guess Brock will show up. But Heyman's like, no, 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 no. Brock Lesnar will be there. And that's where the excitement comes from. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't crazy about Goldberg being the one to beat Lesnar, obviously. But it's clear that everyone was really getting tired of the story they were telling with Brock Lesnar. And this really puts a completely new twist on it. Paul Heyman can't go out there touting what a beast he is when he was beaten in such a convincing way. So now there's just a completely new angle and Brock Lesnar is just out to prove himself and tear everything apart in his path to do so. Yeah, props to WWE a lot. The one thing I, I still don't understand is that they've done this now with that Paul Heyman promo and then the build up to Sasha and Charlotte. Why don't they bring more of these interviews onto the show? Because these happen every week. Michael Cole always interviews anybody, whether Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, it doesn't matter, but they don't put that on Raw. Yet yeah, look at this. It furthers the storyline. It justifies, and this is this is almost similar to what happened at Raw where Roman Reigns beat Kevin Owens cleanly, right? Everybody was panicking, even myself. I was thinking to myself, they're doing the thing now where the champion, who happens to be a bad guy, just gets beat, and it just so happens that it was Roman Reigns. You're not doing yourself any favors. What happens next segment? Interview. Terrible interview is still. like She is like a robot, but despite that, he actually justifies, I got my head on Jericho and all that stuff. Like, man, I'm dealing with my friendship issues. Do you think I got time to worry about Roman Reigns? Those little details. You don't have to wait till next week. You can just tell us. And it, I, I know it didn't exactly you know, clear all the flames and all the fire for people. I don't know about you guys. I want to get that feedback now. But at least for me, I enjoy that because it shows – that these people are not perfect. They're superstars, but they have human emotions and they're bound to mess up. It's nice to get an explanation for things like that instead of it just being like, oh, well, I guess he just beat him and I guess Roman Reigns is better. Now, in an ideal world, it's nice when we have things like number one contender matches so Roman Reigns can earn a shot without having to actually beat the champion because it's kind of like detracts two things from the title match a if roman reigns already gets a win over kevin owens it kind of makes him look like a worse champion and b we're getting the matchup before the matchup so it's you know i feel like a lot of the excitement of seeing two guys clash who you i mean you don't know what they're like you don't know what their encounter is gonna look like you know i feel like a lot of that mystery is just gone now they don't leave that kind of suspense of, oh, you know, how's this match going to go down? What's it going to be like? 
Uh, they just kind of give away matches all the time. So that's that's my gripe with the whole number to get the number one contendership, you have to beat the champion thing. But at least they're giving explanations for it. Storyline explanations. You're telling me a story. I'm willing to forgive it. Uh, you know, I'll take it. Yeah, I agree with Ryan on this, where yes, there is an explanation, but it really only goes so far. I'm happy that it's there, but you still have the champion looking like the weaker person uh, going into the match, which I guess from a bad guy champion perspective is okay, because there's always the buffer of they will cheat to win. But at the same time, you've seen it already, right? What's going to be so special about the pay-per-view match? Probably not that much different. Yeah, it's really tough because especially when you have a guy like Roman Reigns where people just boo him for the sake of booing him, Kevin Owens can punch a child and people will cheer him. So if you think <laughs> about that, extreme, but I, 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 I don't think by we should statement. test this theory out. <laughs> no, we, we shouldn't test the, the theory out. Hey, maybe he can punch little Jimmy. They can bring him back and we got something like that. But does it matter? It's the sad part. I'm not saying I approve a 50-50 booking, but let's be perfectly real here. This does, doesn't matter the outcome from Raw. People are still going to boo one guy, and they're going to cheer the other guy, regardless of their actual actions at any point during the show. And I'm talking only about Owens and Reigns. And then what's the problem there? Like, what is the problem that you need to then fix? Does I'm just even saying, fix that at like, not, not with who gets cheered or whatever, but just how you're kind of positioning your champion. I don't like that the champion has to lose for someone to get a shot at the title. Yeah, I can yeah, I don't that think part. who gets cheered and who gets booed really factors into this. It's about how strong does each guy it how is your excitement going into the match on a superstar versus superstar level not the not a individual level and from that point i think it matters greatly the fact that your number one contender just beat your champion because now you've got your champion looking weaker and i believe that creates less excitement going into the pay-per-view match yeah i mean it's just this is kind of one of the problems with the whole split roster thing is, you know, you have to kind of do matches like this because number one contender matches are going to be too obvious because there's just not enough guys that are built up that you're at the point, you know, because if you do something like Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn for the number one contendership for the title, you know Roman Reigns is going to win because there's not a lot of other guys hanging around that it can face Roman Reigns that you're like, oh, I wonder who it's going to be, you know? But still, going into that Raw main event, you knew Roman Reigns, not the Raw main yeah, event, I'm sorry. Yeah, you still knew Roman Reigns was going to win. You still knew Roman Reigns was going to win, so does it matter if it's the champion or not? If you, uh, yeah. you have a pretty good idea anyway, it's, it's so better why for even it to do be it? obvious in Reigns beats Sami Zayn than for Reigns to beat the actual champion. It's a really tough conversation there because even me at that point, if you want me to watch that match on Raw, there's a good chance my attention will not be completely on that where my attention was on this match. So even though I disagree with the outcome, kind of a little bit, I don't think I would have paid much attention to the other one, but let's actually switch focus to the main event match, which was awesome. Now, I sadly was not able to watch it because Raw ends at midnight for me now, and uh, sometimes I work. I got to get up at five, so yeah, really difficult there, but I watched it the day after, and that was an awesome, awesome match, and we get treated to all these specialty matches. You know, we got the Hell in a Cell match, now we got this, and they've been knocking it out of the park. You know, Sasha Banks, you can add the Iron Man match that she had at NXT. So now there's rumors where they're trading the title back and forth. So maybe that's what the, where they're going to end up going. But just going back to the match itself, what did you guys think of it? This match was a great exercise for me in separating individual moments versus overall storylines and happenings in the WWE because the... It was awesome. They knocked it out of the park with that match. It was great, and I really enjoyed it. But when it's back into the whole picture of, okay, Sasha won the title on Raw again, I guess that means Charlotte's probably going to win it at the pay-per-view because if there's one thing WWE loves, it's their streaks, and Charlotte's got one of those going, probably not going to break that anytime soon, so they'll keep trading the title back and forth. I lose a lot of excitement on that end, but... 
I don't think it detracts from the great match that they had at the time. Yeah, agreed. I mean, in a vacuum, this match is fantastic. It's hard to separate that from what's been going on with the title trading. And it's not even that they're trading titles. It's that they have this specific pattern. You know what I mean? If it's Sasha, the predictability. Yeah, if Sasha was winning a couple pay-per-views and Charlotte was winning a couple of Raws, then, you know, that's all good and fine. But they're legitimately in a formula, and that's what's making it weird. WWE, and this could be a whole nother topic on its own, I feel like WWE has recently gotten, in the last several years, recently gotten obsessed with records. You know, the CM Punk title record, the the Divas Championship title record was, you know, AJ Lee breaks it, then Nikki Bella breaks it. Uh, Now they're doing this with Demolition. And now clearly they're trying to do something with Charlotte and her pay-per-view streak along with probably trying to make her a 16-time women's champion for Raw. So, like, you know, this really comes down to the fact that their obsession with records might actually be taking away from the show because it creates predictability and just gets a little ridiculous. But ultimately, we can talk about, you know, whether they're changing the titles or not. Are you guys enjoying the actual storyline? I enjoy the matches. I really feel like Sasha and Charlotte is getting a little played out. And obviously, you can look at how thin the Raw women's roster is. And it's really just been about the both of them for a little too long. They have great matches, but I think everyone is looking forward to just different matchups with the both of them. Yeah, I agree. It's been a great ride so far, and I think they're both great competitors, but... If I have to hear one more time about how they're transcending the industry and creating history, I might just end it all. Like, just (laughs) move on to move on to different things. Like, you've got this roster and you've got great competitors, but it feels like the the Charlotte and Sasha show just because you're not utilizing everybody else. Like, you've got Bailey there, you've got Nia Jax, you've got Dana Brooke. All of these people, if put in the right scenario, could be legitimate contenders. But you're just focusing on uh, Sasha and Charlotte. You think? some reason that's really hard to say but no it wasn't enough and they just keep going to it and i honestly think we are at a point where it doesn't matter who they put up against either one of them next they're not going to be on that same level it's going to be something along the lines of if roman reigns fought Sami Zayn, it's going to feel like the same thing on the women's division because you've just got short Charlotte and Sasha, I can say this, over at the, like, in this higher tier, and then everybody else is just below them. Yeah, they're, like, Sasha and Charlotte are, like, S tier, and everyone else is either A or B tier. And I guess Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn is just going to be our de facto go-to match example for the (laughs) night. Uh, Pretty much. But it worked very well uh, in in that situation, for sure. Yeah, uh, Hell in a Cell, I think there's a reason most feuds stop after Hell in a Cell. It's kind of like, that's as big as it that's gets. That's the culmination, so what, yeah. Yeah, that's the culmination. And even if like some of these other matches are arguably better, it's like, I feel like the feud is kind of played out at that point. And let's, let's give them a break. I mean, we don't know how long before the next draft is. So you, you may need to get some more out of Sasha and Charlotte later. So let, let's not burn everybody out on it now. Let's not make this Randy Orton versus John Cena already. The one thing I will say as a closing comment here is that they got to be very careful because these matches are very enjoyable because they're doing it right now in a very it's it's one giant lump of just a bunch of matches between Sasha and Charlotte. But at the rate that they're going and this is a question not even more for us, but for everybody listening, do you picture yourself being invested in either one of them if they're doing this same thing five months from now? Like their their storyline is that they're trading it back and forth. They're at, they're having awesome matches. We're not debating that. But at some point, at least for me, like what I like about wrestling is that don't do every match. You look at the Rock and Stone Cold. Every time they wrestled at WrestleMania, it was like, oh man, the Rock and Stone Cold. They're doing that. In between, then they would find creative ways to add, you know, a bunch of people, whether it be jobbers or just lower card guys. But the storyline was that. You know, Stone Cold had beaten The Rock twice. Uh, 
and those crazy things. I'm not going to go into more details there, but just just think about that a little bit, right? Where maybe, maybe just maybe, it's uh, it's time to think about adding more women, or as we said before the draft, just put them in together into one show, and then the cruiserweights in the other one. And related to the cruiserweight, before we get to our uh, WWE TLC predictions slash SmackDown talk, uh, Keith and I, uh, Ryan, it's. We're sorry, I'm man. In I, I, don't, I don't mean, yeah. Uh, I I'm get done, it. man. Okay, no more okay. shows. I'm done. It's okay. It's it's understandable, man. It is your I'm right on, to choose I'm what you want. I'm on strike watch. with 205 Live. Well, 205 Live did happen uh, Tuesday right after SmackDown. Uh, I was not able to watch it then because I was uh, enjoying Final Fantasy 15. I'll be perfectly honest. I've been waiting for that game for <laughs> damn 10 years. And I think I can justify that. But I, because it's on the network, I was able to watch that uh, the day after watch some highlights. I skipped through a couple of things. Rich Swan is the new Cruiserweight champion. That is awesome. Keith, I know you kind of watched it live because you watched it 30 minutes afterwards. So it was, yeah, it was like 20, 30 live-ish. minutes after ish. So what did you think of the overall structure of the show and then ultimately the matches that played out? It took a while for 205 Live to get going. Uh, During the first couple of matches, it really you could feel that fatigue of, hey, this is happening after SmackDown. People aren't really into it. But by the end of it, it really started getting steam. Jack Gallagher basically saved that show is what I'm getting at, where he got everybody excited. But it still feels so weird about how it happens after SmackDown. I can understand why the crowds don't really get all that into it, but it was a good show Like for a viewer at home. It was a great show. Rich Swan and uh, Brian Kedrick had an incredible match, and I very much enjoyed it. Yeah, it's just a shame that the number five rhymes with live because now they just have to do it live, even though it would probably benefit from going on before SmackDown. It should have been 208 it absolutely taped would, or something. <laughs> think, think about being a viewer at SmackDown where, say, two weeks from now, The Undertaker comes back, right? It's a big moment. He has this big stare down with whoever in the ring. That's how they end SmackDown. And then the cruiserweights come can out. You How are you supposed this? to be? In, yeah. How are you supposed to be you're invested just kinda, in that? You're you're bur- you're burnt out by that point, and you're just kind of ready to go home. Yeah, they got to fix that. I don't know if you guys saw, but there's an actual picture going around from the uh, fans podcast on Twitter where he was there live, and like half the people were gone. So the reason the lights were dimmed during that episode, yeah, and there's probably a reason they were for that. dimmed and the security guards were telling people to go back down. So that way they could accommodate people. And that for the wrestlers, that's got to be horrible. That's got to be a horrible sinking feeling where people are they paid money to be there, but they're actually leaving where they paid a ticket to attend the show because everyone they already paid to see they saw. And that's just the reality of it. I mean, the division is still very, very new and most of the, you know, most casual fans and just general WWE fans are not invested in anyone in the division yet. So it's going to be an uphill battle, but you get to start somewhere. But I think that's kind of what they were going for with 205 Live. Like they basically act acted like the raw cruiserweight division never happened. They would talk about things like the cruiserweight classic. They even used the same music as the cruiserweight classic for yeah, the intro. Yeah. So they really leaned into that. They are, and I think that is the exact direction they should go. No, I agree completely. I will say switch to uh, take the WCW formula. Before everything else, put the cruiserweights on. You have people pumped up. They're excited. They know that this is a show on the network. WWE Superstars is gone, so now in place will be 205 Live. Rip WWE Superstars. We uh, barely knew you. I Actually, need something we did, else. and you were very mediocre. I need yeah, something else. Yeah, what else is Wong going to watch yeah. while he's vacuuming or whatever the hell he was? <laughs> Ultimately, and being honest, nothing against 205 Live, but it'll probably be a, a backlog show for me, where kind of like NXT. NXT, I don't watch it every Wednesday now. I save it for whenever it is I can, you know, and I enjoy that. And if I got to watch two episodes in a row, I'll watch the two episodes in a row. So I'm very happy about that. And if you guys want some more Cruiserweight or high flying action, we actually do have the BT Crate giveaway, which ends on December 7th. 
So all you got to do is head on over to bitethat.com. You sign up for the giveaway. You get four wrestling DVDs. You get Triple H's head, a toy action figure version of it. You get a Brie Bellow. I just love saying that. Because anybody listening it, listening to that for the first time, maybe he's going like, what? You get a Shinsuke Nakamura inspired shirt. There's a picture on the website for all the stuff. You got to be from the U.S., Canada, or Mexico in order to enter the giveaway. And we'll be announcing it after the 7th. So uh, stay tuned to that. That's our holiday giveaway there. A bunch of stuff happening on the YouTube channel. Last week, we put out a video where I play WF Betrayal for the Game Boy Color. Ryan Keith joined me. Uh, this week, we put it, we, we put, we play WF Smackdown 2 uh, as part of Play That. That's up on Early Access. So, for anybody who wants to know what Early Access is specifically, if you pledge five bucks a month, you get a bunch of different features, including uh, you get content many days before Monday. You get it, as a matter of fact, before Friday. So you get it many days before. You get shout-outs on the show. Uh, you guys get input for any amount that you put in. If we put polls, if we put questions, suggestions there, you can directly contribute. Once again, that's patreon.com slash bite that. Now, Ryan, we, 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 we got to thank yes, people. Yes, sir. Not because we just do it every week, but Thanksgiving was last week. So make this extra thankful. Extra. With like three X's. Yes, we are very very extra 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 thankful for our patrons this week we would like to extra extra thank mr matthew zaller so thank you so much for your support we of course greatly appreciate it and as juan said all awesome perks and stuff you can head over to patreon.com slash bite that and remember, guys, that's honestly the best way you can help make us uh, grow as a podcast. The podcast is our crew to grow. It's the primary thing. And I know there's some things happening on YouTube uh, where YouTube changed some policies and uh, not everybody's happy about that. And honestly, we do not live off in any sort of way uh, thanks to uh, the uh, the Google ad revenue. The patron is the direct way that you guys can help us make sure that by that this will last five more years. Picture, picture a wrestling podcast with Keith at 85 years old, and he's still complaining about Roman Reigns not being a heel. That alone is worth the price it of admission. It could happen. It could happen. God. <laughs> Watching wrestling at 85 <laughs> years old. God, if, if I'm still complaining about like, oh, they did this. and If I say the words at 85 years old, if Chris Jericho and Kane feuded over a cup of coffee back in my day, just shoot me, <laughs> please. <laughs> oh, my you know, God. I think you'll be so out of it at 85, you'll actually think wrestling is real again. <laughs> that Roman what Reigns traumatic Jr. experience leads to that? Oh, my God. That's terrible. Or you'll become Lo John Laurinaitis as one. Point yes! <laughs> God! Back in my day! My he was on King. coffee! Oh! The <laughs> women revolutionized everything! We still don't know who started the damn Divas Revolution! Alright, I'm done. I'm gonna be on Total Bella Season 2! Yeah! Wait, they're only in Season 2 and Keith at being 85 years old? Damn! Oh no, I was saying John Laurinaitis. Season break. Oh, okay. okay. Isn't John okay. Laurinaitis married to the Bella Twins' mother now? We obviously, yeah. we had a lack of communication there. Yeah, I, I, was started, doing I just me. started going uh, <laughs> oh. Johnny Ace. Okay. Well, we learned what right. he uh, no, sounds like when he's John old. Bella's season one is going to be 84 years long. <laughs> yeah. So get ready, folks. Oh boy. So, folks, it is now time for the predictions. For WWE TLC happening this Sunday, also happening this Sunday is a pl plenty lengthy recording session, or this weekend I should say, not necessarily Sunday where we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. End of year, that's going to be super special. But we got uh, we got TLC happening Sunday, so what we'll do is we're going to lump up what we thought about SmackDown with the predictions based on the matches that we're going to talk about. So the first one here is the one-man Rhino Machine, as I wrote. So Heat Slater and the War Machine Rhino taking on the Apex Wyatt family consisting of Bray Wyatt and, and that Randy is Orton. their actual name, I'm sure. Is it actually? No, it's not. I totally no, wrote no, the Apex it's not. <laughs> oh, okay. The Apex Wyatt family. Forget <laughs> This ain't your grandmother's Wyatt family. <laughs> yeah. Well, they are saying, they are saying like the new Wyatt family, so it's not out the of the new, realm of possibility. New Wyatt family? New Does it really Wyatt? work? 
New, it doesn't roll off the tongue as well, but new, what did you guys uh, thought about this? New white family. No, no, <laughs> just, just no. You can go first for that. Go All ahead. Right. <laughs> uh, well, I, you know, I was really looking forward to seeing American Alpha in this spot, but this is definitely a, an intriguing matchup. Uh, Orton and Bray seem to be getting along pretty well and they're working really well together. So this just feels like a, a big mismatch just because of the way um, Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt are positioned right now as like pseudo main eventers. So you're wondering if uh, this is really a tough one to call because I could really see it going either way because if Rhino and Slater win, it's basically because Orton betrays Bray Wyatt. But I could also just realistically see a scenario where just Orton and Bray Wyatt win. But I'm going to go with my gut and say that Orton will betray Wyatt and Heath Slater and Rhino will win. I think this gives them the perfect tool for Randy Orton to eventually betray Bray Wyatt. But I don't think Sunday is that day. I think they still ride this Wyatt family thing out a little longer and uh, they take the tag team titles from Beauty and the Man Beast. And... uh Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is Bray's first title, right? If if he wins, wow. it will be his first title. Luke Harper won a title before Bray Wyatt did. Eric Rowan won a title before Wait, Bray Eric Wyatt Rowan did. Won a title? Eric Him and Rowan. Harper were tag team champions, weren't they? No, I don't think they ever were. Oh. Where, wait, well, never mind no, they, then. I don't think they were, were they? Juan, do you know? I need... Okay, well, I give my predictions. What, they what definitely look, were Keith. in NXT. I know that. Oh, yeah, they were in NXT, actually. Yes, but NXT for sure. Keith, Keith, look the, look yes. up this information. Nobody, Nobody's totally knowing about right, this right I'm, now. I'm, I'm on, I'm on Fact it. checker, Keith. Meanwhile, I got to agree. I think that they need to ride off into the sunset with Rhino and Heat Slater before they, they run this drive. Because, honestly, it was fun at first. And it's not that they're doing bad with it, but they're not doing anything. They're not doing enough to say, okay, this is why they should keep the tag titles. They can continue having storylines doing that, but maybe doing Wyatt family versus American alpha for a little while could be really cool. And, uh, you know, they extend that till the rumble. Possibly. I don't think Randy Orton's going to turn on Bray Wyatt. Now. I like the dynamic that they have where they're kind of just acting like brothers. It's not that, Randy Orton is behind Bray Wyatt, who's controlling him. No, they're they're just hanging out. They're, they're more cool equal with each other. Orton's gonna start growing that beard out, though. He's gonna and he's pants. gonna belong. Agreed. I really like this salt and pepper look Randy Orton's beard has going on. Why but can't I he not wear pants? You just you're ask you ask too much. That's his but gimmick, man. He's according gotta, to he's Wikipedia, Eric Rowan is only nxt tag team champion he never Aww. won a wwe champion but but he did main event against the rock at wrestlemania and he does have a slammy award for match of the year in 2014 with team cena versus team authority hey so yeah both harper and rowan have more accolades than bray wyatt <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy to think about that Luke Harper is the only person of the OG Wyatt family that's won a title. And now he's losing to Kane because that's, that's what he does, unfortunately. Moving on to the next Poor match, Herb. we get a chairs match. It's back. It's back. We get Kalisto versus Baron Corbin. This has been building up ever since the draft actually happened. It cooled off for a little while. Kalisto came back, and then, bam, we got the storyline happening. I just want to start off first saying I really just don't care about this. I think it's just it's so forced. They went back to it. They could have done so much more with Kalisto and the Cruiserweights or Corbin with something else. I don't doubt that this will be a decent match, but I can't say that I'm looking forward to it or that I, I may not be making popcorn during it as opposed to watching it. But I think chairs match, man. What could be greater? Who who are you who are you predicting to win? I am predicting uh, I'm predicting Kalisto. He's got weapons. Well, he's got weapon. He's, he's got, got he's going to make weapon. a good lucha thing. Yeah, he's got he's he's going to kill himself with a chair or something. Not <laughs> literally. Yeah. But poor guy. 
It's going to be Kalisto yeah, winning. Yeah, chairs match. I can't say I'm ever really hyped up for a chairs match. And, you know, I'm just going to, like, I, I want to see Corbin move on to bigger and better things. Honestly, Kalisto, super talented. But I'm just going to put it out there. I don't give a shit about Kalisto. I really, I just don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. But That's fair. I, I just don't care. And I, f- I feel like Corbin has a ton of potential. And I, I just want to see, so, I just want to see him feud with somebody else. He's just crying right now. <laughs> He's like, just you, don't just, sad, you don't do just, the lucha, lucha thing. You don't like that. It's wrong? just like a, there's just a frown on his, you know, a sad frown on his mask. <laughs> I mean, he, his mouth, his, his mask doesn't even have a mouth part, does it? <laughs> I think it kind of. Kind of. No, it's like yeah. cut off though, so you can actually it's like see a his half mouth. mouth. You can see yeah. his jaw. Whatever. But we have confirmed that there are no Lucha things happening in the McNulty household. But this totally does feel like just a cookie cutter Baron Corbin feud at this point. This is all Corbin's really been doing all year. Like, yes, he has a ton of potential, but boy, it hasn't really shown He's yet, only allowed to feud with Dolph Ziggler and Kalisto. Even in NXT, <laughs> this was his exact same thing in NXT. The indie killer guy, basically, with uh, Austin Aries and all that. And then he's still doing the same thing, but it's not. Yeah, it's not doing anything for him. It's absolutely not. It feels like a coasting, except that Baron Corbett has never hit that great point beforehand. It doesn't feel good. It's like it basically it's like a, if Apollo Cruz got actual TV time, it would probably be the same scenario. But I'm with you guys. I don't care. Who wins? I'm going to go with Baron Corbin because I think there's brighter things in his future. And I don't even think that's saying much. And it's a chair match. So whoop de doo I mean, it's no stairs match, which I might add is another accolade in Eric Rowan's career being part <laughs> of the stairs match. But yeah, this is the forgettable match of the night. Next one, we got the no DQ match. So it is Nikki Bella taking on Carmella. I'm really looking forward to this. I think that. This show has the potential to have the two matches of the night being the women's matches, not just one. I really enjoy how they're able to still have a storyline happening that is not revolving around the title. Yeah, this feud, uh, it's it's been going on for a while, but it doesn't feel like they've outplayed it because they haven't had them face each other a ton of times. Um, who I don't remember who won the last encounter was. Did it end in a disqualification? I'm not sure what happened, but I'm, I think I, Nikki won at No Mercy was the last one. Mm hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's been quite Keith, a while, but either Keith, way, I'm still going to pick you did earlier. Yeah. All right. I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going to pick uh, Nikki Bella to win this, even though Carmella is going to lose out in the feud. She's definitely become a significant player, whether she wins or loses. But it's clear that uh, Nikki Bella Still, uh, you know, coming back needs a good win and probably will get involved in the title scene after this, I'm assuming. Oh, for sure. And if No Mercy was their last encounter, which I think it was, uh, Nikki Bella won. But yeah, this this has been a great feud. Uh, I think this match is less about who wins and who loses and more about how far they go with the actual match. Like if this is a no DQ match... How no disqualification are they going to get with it? Are they going to bring out weapons? Is it going to get crazy? Are we going to have somebody like go through a table? Probably not because the other match is a table match, but will they bring out chairs and stuff like that? And if they go that far, I feel like it has potential to be a great match and a shocking match in the good way. All that being said, I do think Nikki Bella does win. They got a lot of pressure with this match, more so than the table match because of the main event that we got on Raw. So you got to be thinking that Nikki Bella and Carmella are trying their hardest to make sure they excel. They're better than that Raw match. Uh, You know, props to them and good luck to them. I don't think it's going to happen, but it's great that we're worried about which one of the women's matches is going to be the better one, not which one is the least crappy one. And we haven't had that for quite a while, so I'm very, very happy about that. But I think that... Carmella should get this win because I don't, I don't I don't know what happens here because we talk about the limited rosters. It's almost like a 50-50 booking decision if you no know, Nikki Bella just won the previous pay-per-view 
for SmackDown, and now I'm saying Carmella wins. But honestly, if Nikki Bella wins twice, then what? What happens with Carmella? So this is an ongoing issue that's going to happen regardless of the storylines, unless they move on. But the women don't have a tag title to go to, right? They don't have the Intercontinental title to go to. They only have their title. So it's either the title or whatever storyline is happening. So it's very, very difficult for them. Now, moving on, we get the ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. The Miz versus Dolph Ziggler. I am very much looking forward to your reactions to this match. Yep. Well, Ziggler probably should have quit while he was ahead. Uh, I really think The Miz should win this match. I think he will win this match. The Intercontinental title just seems more interesting when The Miz has it. Ziggler had it for, what, a month and a half, and it didn't really feel like anything happened until they just decided to give it to The Miz before Survivor Series. So uh, I'm, I'm thinking The Miz is going to keep it. And exactly my worry of what would happen if Ziggler was to win the, the title back at, I think it was No Mercy, and not leave WWE, was he was just going to fall into exactly where he was before, and nothing was really going to happen with him. And I feel like that's just going to happen again. Yep, I agree. Ziggler should have quit while he was ahead, and I think it's time for The Miz to move on. It'll probably be a great match, but it'll be another Ziggler versus The Miz match. Maurice will probably interfere. There will be a couple of cool spots. Miz will win because of it. Move on. I have a very hard time just trying to figure out what's going to happen with this match because I just don't I don't care about Ziggler. I am so done with whatever they do with the guy. So I'm just going to go with The Miz because he's the one that entertains me the most. I don't care how many times Ziggler super kicks or something. It's not that I have anything against the person. The character is so oversaturated because he's been doing the same character for how many years now? And it got him nowhere. And it still got him nowhere because even the storyline was about that. So what does that say about that, right? So I think it's going to be down to The Miz uh, having that. So now we move on to the next match which is the table smash for the WWE SmackDown Live Women's Championship. We got Becky Lynch defending against Alexa Bliss. I said I'm really weird. looking forward. Why, but... Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this match. I loved the contract signing. Thought it was awesome. Really cool to see a table spot in a women's contract signing. Mm-hmm. I was just, I was super into it. I just thought it was awesome. And, uh, you know, just... Uh, you really actually feel like they they want to beat the crap out of each other, and it feels appropriate. It doesn't feel forced that it's a tables match. It feels right. Uh, Becky Lynch probably gonna win this one, and I think that's the right way to go. Keep establishing her as the the top uh, the top woman on the on the roster, and you know I think Alexis, even though she's kind of lose both encounters, I feel like she has grown and elevated a lot from this feud i love the fact that this is a table match because it's those subtle like middle fingers going back and forth between raw and smackdown like think back to the uh women's hell in a cell match how many table spots did they mess up not one but two so let's have a tables match and then we'll show you how to do it right yeah, it's, and, uh, and it's Becky and Alexa that. already have one table spot gone right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and I think this will have a, a lot of the same feel as the Carmella Nikki Bella match, where it's more of a question of how far are they going to go with this match. I think it'll be a great match, and I agree that Becky Lynch will probably come out on top. It's nice that we get this feeling that there is some sense of competition and it really feels like both women's divisions are trying to outdo each other. And guess what? Because of that, both women's divisions are pretty interesting right now, even if Raw needs to get some more players involved. Agreed. We still don't know who started the revolution, though, but I got to go with Becky Lynch as well, even though I would totally be total, totally, 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 that it seems like an indie character or something. Totally. <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah. Just sure. Incredible's new tag partner. Yeah. <laughs> just Oh my God. Okay. So totally just incredible. Ryan, you did it again. Two weeks. It, in a row, yeah. Man. Just pure silence. 
Oh, so we bad. We did it again, folks. We did it again. So bad, but... You know, I'm actually going to change my pick. I'm totally going to change my pick. Thank you for that. You gave me enough time to analyze that, so totally worth it. I'm going to go with Alexa Bliss because thinking about it, there's been this whole buildup. The rope on the, you know, the foot on the rope situation that happened uh, at their SmackDown match, which was great. Alexa Bliss deserves it. And I like the idea of her finally having the championship and becoming obsessed with it. I think this is the next Mickey James uh, type scenario or even Daphne or, you know, something like that where she becomes obsessed with it, where she is like freaking out, panicking, and she can pull that off. She has the skill, the acting abilities to really pull that off. So I think it's going to be a very, very good match. Juan's classic bold prediction. It's going to happen. <laughs> it's it's got to happen. Please. Please let it happen. Main event time. We got TLC match for the WWE World Championship. AJ Styles defends against James Ellsworth. No, Dean Ambrose. Because a James Ellsworth. Yeah, James Ellsworth he is gone now. He, yeah, he rest in peace. You you know you. Any man with two hands had a fighting chance. You had a fighting chance, but it was a very small chance. And now, now any man with two hands can have a hospital bed. And get yes. styles clashed. So I think it's safe to say that unless Ellsworth rolls down the ramp in his hospital bed, that he is not going to get involved in this match. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, AJ Styles in a TLC match is pretty much anything you could ever hope for. And Ambrose is probably going to be willing to to take some punishment to go along with that. So I think they're just going to tear the house down. AJ Styles, I'm thinking, is is still going to he's going to still walk out champion. I'm very intrigued to see how this goes down. Yeah, like this has potential to be the perfect TLC match, just the way that AJ Styles is AJ Styles and he's the best period. And Dean Ambrose is willing to go do some crazy spots. So we could get a serious like moment of the year happening in this match. But I have to disagree with the James Ellsworth part. I think he's going to show up just because it's that whole he keeps showing up and he keeps showing up and I think he's going to take the most he's insane gonna be in a damn bump. body cast. <laughs> Do you remember a few years ago? I think the match was CM Punk versus John Cena versus Alberto Del Rio in a TLC match, and Ricardo Rodriguez just took like the sickest bump right. where he um he fell off the ladder onto a table on the outside. I think that's what's basically gonna happen <laughs> to James Ellsworth in this match. He's gonna take a bump of that degree, and I I hope it happens. So he's so eventually going to become to... WWE's Kenny. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's what I was thinking, he is too. WWE's he's Kenny. He's just going to die. AJ Styles is going to kill him in every episode. And he's just going to come back next week. But at least Ellsworth learned not to tuck his his what chin he has oh God, on the Styles Clash. Oh, God. That could have been so bad. Because I was nervous for him. I was real nervous for him. Well, notice that he had extra height. So even, you know, mid-air, yeah. he could adjust if that were to oh, happen. Oh, yeah. No, and AJ... I think, you know, I think AJ finally gave Ellsworth, like, his receipt because Ellsworth has gotten a lot from WWE and hasn't had to take much punishment for it. And, you know, I think that chair shot that he gave him was just, you know, hey, welcome to the WWE. I'm really looking forward to this match. I'm looking forward to the whole pay-per-view. I know I keep saying that for every match except, you know, the two matches. So technically not every match, but the big <laughs> matches I actually really care about regardless yeah. of the outcome it is something yeah, where i want to sit be, down and watch it could be a relatively predictable show but just the matches themselves i feel like this has so much potential to just be an amazing show yeah so with the world championship match i gotta go with aj styles i don't believe dean ambrose will ever get the title back until after a possible draft. I don't think he should. AJ Styles is doing awesome. What they're doing between him and James Ellsworth, I, I think is actually not only just entertaining, it's actually helping AJ Styles as a character because he's got to find creative ways to justify how this nothing of a man based on WWE's storyline has beaten him three times and they're able to do it and he doesn't look weak. So everybody listening, 
Please drop your predictions on Twitter. Let us know what is the match you're looking forward to the most. If you're listening to this on YouTube, you can also do that. Now, something very special. I don't think Ryan and Keith even know this just happened, but um, I just got an email that states that we just got a $6 pledge, so we technically just passed our $50 goal. That is the first goal we ever have on Patreon. Oh, snap. Okay, I'm done. Okay, Keith, you're you're killing the mo. No, but seriously, thank you so much to Joe Windingland who pledged six dollars. Now, this is awesome because what this means, and I'm, we're just gonna say this right now, we're not gonna schedule it yet because we got to do some uh, we got to do some scheduling. We're gonna be doing a 12 hour wrestling video game marathon on our twitch.tv slash by that uh, channel, which, by the way, if you enter the giveaway that we mentioned earlier on December 7th, there's actually uh, an entry that you can get just by following the by that Twitch. So just go to the website. The, all the details are there. This is awesome because we we get to just grow directly with the community, with you guys. And, you know, for 2016, we're still thinking about different ways to have the podcast grow. Some changing, some changes may be happening more so on the YouTube side than on the audio only side. But we want to make sure that whatever happens, right, the podcast is always the primary thing. It's always growing. It's always getting better. You know, we try to be just more us, right? Listen back to like podcast 10 and listen to Ryan, you know, don't yeah, do you that. probably yeah. shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't do that. No, you know, and, and I'm not only going to egg on you, Ryan, but, you know, Ryan was, dude, you, you're a different human being almost if you compare Ryan episode 10 to now. In my case, I was superly overly structured. It needed to be perfect, right? I can mess up once over editing and Keith has somehow managed to be the same person the whole time. <laughs> The consistent when you're good, is like, you're good, baby. Yeah, Keith start out like way too positive, but fine. You know, his black heart has finally shown through on the podcast. This checks out. One time we told him, <laughs> Keith, unleash the beast. Unleash yeah, the beast, my we're friend. We're super excited that we just hit our first goal and live on the show. Pretty cool um, that we just hit our first goal. And so, you know, you guys got to let us know, hey, what wrestling games you want to see us play? We're probably going to play a lot of the obvious greats, you know, probably things like No Mercy and, you know, WWE 2K14 and things like that. Um, but yeah, we will we will make sure to let you guys know as soon as we figure out what date we're going to be doing that stream. That's going to be open to everyone who wants to come hang out, watch us play tons of wrestling video games. And hey, just it's talk. On to a, yeah. And, you know, hey, we're just going to work towards our next goal and keep improving the show and uh, keep delivering content for you guys. Yeah, so thank you so much for everybody. And remember, you can always interact with us on social media. Bite that cast. That is where you can send questions for the show using the hashtag AskBT. Uh, that and the email, which is bite that cast at gmail.com, have definitely become the best platform for the uh, questions. So maybe we're just going to go with that officially from now on, like as the primary ones. You can also do them on Instagram and Facebook and all that. But those help a lot because I see people interacting between each other, right? Somebody will ask a question, but then another fan will start saying, hey, yeah, but what about this and that? So you can get involved in that type of conversation. So Keith, take it yes. away, my friend. All right, take it away, I shall. Our first question comes from Philip A. this week. And Philip asks, Hey, gang. Hey. I'm getting a haircut soon because I have long curly hair and it gets to be a bit too much. So my question is, which superstars suited long hair and which ones just didn't look right? Also, can you think of great examples where a hair change actually looked great on a superstar? And does anybody on the roster currently need a hair change? Take care. Spike your hair. L'Oreal, because you're worth it. We are not endorsed by L'Oreal. And the Iron Sheet <laughs> ate pumpkin seed. What? I love it. It's so random. I, I guess he did. But that's amazing. Iron Sheik. What a wonderful person. Um, right. Let's see. Which superstars just didn't look right? Um... It's tough to for me to think on the spot, but the first person that came to mind, it was kind of like looking back. Christian now looks weird to me with long hair. I think he looks yeah. way, way better with short hair. 
Um, so he he's definitely the the best example I can think of. The Rock. The Rock has got to be one. Oh yeah. Oh my God. He's got to be the oh, example yeah. of anything. You can also talk about Undertaker. Because Undertaker's gone through all phases at this point, from a lot of hair to no hair, <laughs> to the mohawk thing, which, don't do that again. Yeah, that I was wasn't not a good crazy idea. about the mohawk thing. Stone Cold. Fact, I didn't even know Stone Cold wrestled with long blonde hair. I remember I walked into his Sun Coast. He was Coast. a Hollywood blonde, baby. Yeah, Hollywood blondes, man. And I walked into his Sun's Coast, and I saw the greatest hits of Stunning Steve Austin, and I thought it was a guy trying to be Stone Cold. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I That's didn't have amazing. internet back then. It wasn't so accessible. So, But The Rock has got to be the best option. But changes that then were for the better, I would say Triple H as the most recent example. I mean, he brings it up. But Triple H, I was so concerned at first, but he looks badass with the just yeah, ball. The short hair is not. Uh, yeah, he looks pretty damn good with it. Yeah, Triple H is the gold star example of sometimes a haircut is a great thing because he looks so much more badass with the short hair. Oh, it's so great. And does anybody currently need a hair change is the final part of this question. Mm, okay, so we, Cesaro, he doesn't have many options. Sheamus already yeah. went through. <laughs> Maybe that's not a choice. I like Seamus as well. Yeah, Seamus works for his gimmick, I think, big time. You know who? If they want to change things up, Roman Reigns. I'm not saying 2016, but I'm saying late 2017, whenever they choose to do whatever they want to do with him, change the outfit, the entrance, his style, and the hair. Make Actually make a statement about we're changing things up. A short hair Roman Reigns? It would maybe look weird or even go bald. Who? Like, do, all right, do Seth well. Rollins or Roman Reigns? Who do you think would look better with shorter hair? Probably Seth, because I actually can't imagine Roman with short hair. But if they both went short hair, think about all the water you would save, all the money on water you would <laughs> save from just not having to douse it in just 10 liters before they come out. That is a but really thank good you for the question. <laughs> Our next question comes from a loving patron of this show, Mr. B. Seagrest, who asks, Hey guys, Thanksgiving just passed, and I was curious, what are some wrestling moments or superstars you are thankful for? It could be a match, a pay-per-view, meeting a superstar. A few of mine are Flair vs. Sting from Clash of Champions 89, or the Mankind vs. Undertaker Hell in a Cell. Thanks, guys. Love the show, and thank you for the hard work. Well, you are quite welcome. <clears throat> I'll tell you the number one thing in wrestling that I'm thankful for, without question, and I'm going to sound like a shill here, but the WWE Network, because it's only $9.99, Michael, but no, the actual ability to get all the pay-per-views for only 10 bucks a month. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm like my throat there, but Getting all the pay-per-views for 10 bucks a month is just huge, and I keep losing my voice, so I'm going to stop talking. Ryan, breathe, yeah, buddy. I You're have so to overwhelmed agree. with it. I have to agree with you where the thing I am it. most thankful for in wrestling right now is the WWE Network. Because all of this, as somebody that likes older wrestling, as somebody that can just go back, like I feel like watching... I don't know, King of the Ring 2001, because that's a great event. Boom, it's at my fingertips. I feel like watching some original content. Boom, I can go watch things like WWE 24 and Breaking Ground. There's just so much accessible for a very low price of $9.99 that it's hard not to be thankful <laughs> for it. Man, my answer is so, so serious, but I mean, it, it's real. Where, where you want to talk about what I'm thankful for, I got to be thankful for Alita. Without going into too much details, I I had some darker times uh, growing up, and I was kind of socially isolated for different reasons. And uh, when I met her, she talked to me. Uh, my, my mom was able to get a one-on-one -on -one meeting between me and Lita um, and a bunch of security guards, but I was able to just talk <laughs> with her. You know, like a bunch of security guards. And I was like a little kid. I'm like, I'm not going to kill anybody. Come on, man. But... I was able to talk to her and, you know, she wanted to know a little bit about my story. And, you know, I told her and she was ta telling me, you know, that as wrestlers, the dark, you know, the, the things we know now, thanks to the Internet, the dark 
you know, world of wrestling. She was telling me a little bit about that and how, you know, some things that I was going through, they were going to go away eventually. And that meant a lot to me because I was able to meet a real life superhero. You know, wrestling was my life. It was the one thing I w- that would keep me motivated every week. And then meeting her and then seeing that, I always have a special place for Lita in my heart, even in the pre-show and all that. It's like, <laughs> thank you, Lita. People, t- you know, that little kid, thank Brett. I thank Lita. Thank you, Brett. I'm you also thankful me. for Chris Jericho. Because you know what? Chris Jericho is a guy who's having one of the best years of his career. And, you know, he doesn't need to do this anymore. He doesn't need to be there. But he's there doing it anyway, entertaining us every week. So he's he's one person I'm thankful for. And, you know, along the lines of what Juan said, I know this isn't the popular thing anymore. But one person I will always be thankful for is CM Punk during like the era of punk it was something that is holds a very special place in my heart and gave me a lot of focus when i needed it so um that i'm also very thankful for mr punk 100 percent, me too because he's basically the reason i started watching wrestling again in like 2012 so thanks punk even though you hate you hate us all now it's cool we still love you (laughs) yeah we still had a magical moment it's like an ex that you don't talk to anymore, but, you know, you can always share the good times. Whew, so thank you for the question. Our next one comes in from ST3 was here. Who asks, who do you believe is the biggest steal of the draft? Many are saying Alexa Bliss, and I'm inclined to agree. Steal mm. me- means like somebody that is just awesome, right? That brain Maybe, got well, the better. I'm saying I would that say, somebody that like got drafted way lower than they should yeah, have, I guess, ended up and being really a big just, asset okay, okay. to the show. Hmm. Finn Balor was the worst pick by far. <laughs> yeah, Under that yeah, assumption, yeah. yeah, yeah, that didn't work out. He he was like the he was like that big rookie bust that just doesn't pan out for a team. Uh, yeah, Alexa Bliss probably has to be because of where she was drafted and what her status is on the show no you know all the other big players were drafted relatively high you can you know like aj styles and roman reigns and seth rollins uh kevin owens is another steal you could say he was drafted pretty low and now he's the champion so yeah he's another good example i mean this was alexa bliss's call up right so of course it was going to be low I don't think that excuses it, but I understand why it happened. For me, it might sound weird, but I think the biggest steal is Randy Orton. Like, he was drafted relatively high, but expectations of Randy, what Randy would do versus what Randy is actually doing now, I think, are the biggest uh, difference as far as pre- and post-draft goes. We all figured, oh, he would just do... Oh, he'd coast for a bit. Randy Orton would have a great feud, have a couple of great RKOs, and then just move. He'd go into in Blandy people. Borton mode. Yeah, he would go into Blandy Borton mode. But Randy Orton's been killing it with the Wyatt family way more than I would have expected. And it's been awesome. You can make a tiny case. I know AJ Styles is not a small draft pick or something, but they. They put a lot on the line for a guy that hasn't even been in the company for a year and to have him be the leader of the flagship show and then it worked great. So you can definitely put him there. But yeah, I honestly got to go with Alexa Bliss. I mean, I talked about how much I'm looking forward to their match, right? And who would have thought? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So thank you for the question. Our next one comes in from Sam H. Who asks... Is the TLC match outdated? Yeah, ladders are cool, but brutality is minimal. Could TLC be replaced? And if so, with what? Uh, Could TLC be replaced? Yes, please. Why not? It's not, to me, nearly as egregious as the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. But we've said it before. Themed pay-per-views only really limit what you can do in a show, as opposed to just a generic show like Roadblock or whatever that's coming up. That way you can do whatever match you want. And if it feels right to do a TLC match, you can do a TLC match. But when they kind of have to force gimmick matches into everything, it works a lot better with TLC than Hell in a Cell. Because at least they can do a chairs match. 
which everybody loves. But you can do a tables match and a ladder match too, and then you have the big TLC match. It at least creates diversity as opposed to having three freaking Hell in a Cell matches. So TLC works a lot better in that way. But still, we got money in the bank already doing ladder matches. Let's just get rid of theme pay-per-views. Yeah, I think TLC is fine with the way it is. TLC is definitely the match of the old era that translates the best, where it doesn't really need to be... You, we're never going to get TLC 2 again, but that's totally okay, because that was great then, and we honestly shouldn't get TLC 2. But the one-on-one -on -one TLC matches have been fine. Yes, not all of them have been barn burners, but I think there are matches like the Hell in a Cell that need to go away before TLC. It's fine, and if it were to get replaced... Just make it a ladder match because it's all a TLC match really is with a couple of extra things on uh, around the ring. TLC is a tough thing also because it's not even the whole PG thing. It's what else do you do, right? Almost every wrestler that has been in TLC has said it. We oversaturated this match. It happened way more often than it should. And it led to just doing a whole lot of the same things. So... I, I like it. I, I know it's not the same thing. You know, obviously they can't get as hard, as a uh, hardcore as they used to with the match, but I still have a really fun time watching it. And it's a matter of finding creativity with what you have, not with what you don't have. Yeah, I think that's exactly it. As long as they can keep making the TLC interesting, then why should it go away? So thank you for the question. Our next one comes in from Peter D, another love lovely just beautiful patron of ours who asks how is rusev considered a heel everything he's done over the last few months has been totally justified both with roman reigns and enzo amore and that is a hard point to argue you really can't argue that this happens all the time you can look back to the the classic sheamus versus del rio feud where Sheamus literally took a shit in the dude's Ferrari and uh, and, and threw up in it and stuff. And good all times, of a sudden, Del Rio's times. the bad guy. He stole a car and took a shit in it, all right? So this is not uh, new. And it, there's a reason why sometimes a lot of heels get cheered. Although Rusev, because he still has the whole anti-American gimmick, that's pretty much the only thing keeping people from from cheering this guy because there's really not a lot to hate about Rusev. He's pretty hilarious on the mic a lot of times. And yeah, he's completely justified in this. If some dude showed up naked and started talking to your wife, I'm pretty sure you'd be pissed about it too. Unless hey. you're a very different kind of person. <laughs> and you're into that sort of thing. Someone please talk. <laughs> so, sometimes the keys just end up in the bowl, but yeah, no Rusev is totally justified in both of these things like ruining your fake wedding insulting your wife showing up naked in front of your wife all of these things are justified for rusev to go kill a man and it's not good from a heel perspective i pretty much have nothing else to add it, it makes no sense for for anybody to boo a guy who loves his wife he had a lovely, you know, wedding and all that stuff. And then we're supposed to hate him, even though he's cool. He's funny on Twitter. And then his wife is Lana. He had shit talked about his grandmother. <laughs> Room for her Rusev. Yeah, yeah. Kill a man. <laughs> that ain't cool, yo. His grandmother Nobody. recently passed away, didn't she? I believe so. Yeah, she yeah, did. Yeah, that, that, that ain't cool. That ain't cool that, to that be talking cool about all. somebody like that. Man, what a no. downer now. Rusev is the most sympathetic character on Raw. What the hell? Real talk. Yes. Yes, he is. So thank you for the question. Our next one comes in from TMK Tanner, who asks, If each of you were a perfume, what would your scents be? What would the name of the scent be? And you cannot use your actual name. All right. My scent would be called Unenthusiasm. And it would smell like cheap laundry. <laughs> cheap laundry detergent. Wow. Oh, man. Wow, that's the worst because that sticks to you. 
Like that does not yeah. go away for like a month, man. And you get itchy afterwards. Well, yeah, I guess it makes sense with Ryan. Okay, so <laughs> oh. I'm clean, <laughs> folks. I'm clean. All right. <laughs> I just meant that in the shower sense. What are you talking about? Okay. Just stop talking. <laughs> so, Keith, go oh ahead. God. Yeah, you go, Keith. Yeah, you're cut off, Juan. I'm, I'm, look at me. I'm, gonna... I, I'm the host of the show now. Damn. Damn. <laughs> I'm going to go your direction, Ryan, except in a positive way. I think you could have a best-selling perfume of having, like, you know that smell of just sheets after a good wash and a good dry that beautiful smell of just clean clean that'd linen be, that'd be my perfume and it'd be called sexify see for me this would be i gotta say puerto rico right so first up 99.9 percent of the proceeds would go to puerto rico it would be called caribbean Cor- it would be called caribbean corruption and it would smell of pure desperation <laughs> oh, so it'd be perfect for Ryan. So thank you for the question. Is a <laughs> I'm so happy you didn't catch that one. All right. I heard you. I heard you. So our next question. Do I have to? Keith. Do I have to? Do it. Do it. Oh, fine. Do it. Our next question comes from Joe W, who I might add is a lovely supporter of this show. Less lovely because of this question, but lovely nonetheless. And he's the one that got us over the 50 goal. That is true. Less of a question, more of a joke. And I use joke in quotations. Oh boy. What punishment did Vince McMahon give Seth Rollins after his photo leak? What punishment did he give him, Keith? <sighs> He could only win with a small package. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally my type of joke. Oh. For context, never forget that we, I mean, the three of us have seen Seth Rollins' dinky dink. So, <laughs> <laughs> Wow. We're pretty mature on this show, that's for sure. You know, yeah, we you make know, sure that we always keep on track of just the hard-hitting topics. Yeah. And uh, Hey, let me put it this way. This is one of the positives of wrestling not being super mainstream anymore, is that Seth Rollins pretty smoothly got past that whole dick pic thing. Architect? Like, it, sure. More like it was like architect. A, yeah. Oh, <laughs> it was smooth. He is real smooth. Uh, no, like, it, it blew up for, like, a week and a half. It blew up in his face. And then uh, and then it just kind of went away. It just kind of shriveled down. All right. So thank you for the question. Our final question of the show, and really this is the only thing no, that can, can finish keep the show going now. for no, me. We can fin- we can no, go, we can go to the closing part. I like that nope, part with the Ryan part. I've been saving this in my pocket for when I needed it, when I really needed to hit you on where it hurts. But Jared Q... One might say it's time to finally light it up. Yes, one might say it is time to finally light it up. Jared, I like you. Jared Q brings up a point in a question where he asks, As a BT historian, will Juan finally fulfill his bet of cosplaying as AJ Lee since you guys will be together at WrestleMania. For context, the bet was that AJ Lee would be on Total Divas or Juan would go to a live event cosplaying as AJ Lee. So, I remember this. I've had this clip on standby for a very long time in case I've needed to pull this out. And part of the deal was that Ryan got to choose which event... Juan went to. Now, Ryan, I don't want to influence you in any way, but I'm just saying we'll be going to NXT TakeOver together. So I just no, want to throw that no. out there. <laughs> dude! dude. Uh, you know, I almost want to say the Hall of Fame ceremony. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but that's, that's not tasteful. But the Hall of Fame should be tasteful. I will I will leave you in suspense. 
because I'd like to hear from the bike club. I'd like to hear from our audience which event they would like to see. We should but set I'm just up gonna a poll. put it out there. I'm going to give him mercy with WrestleMania. So it's either going to be NXT or the Hall of Fame. So let me know what you guys think. All and, right, uh, Bike Club. Yeah. I don't want to influence you in any way. But imagine it being at NXT TakeOver. <laughs> Just think about that. Think about what that... Think about the looks he will get. Think about just the disgust <laughs> people will give him. And the NXT crowd dressed up as AJ, so AJ Lee. And we're on talking Total Divas. Is that just like through the match? No, it was or? no like if she was a cast member the same way like Lana and Renee Young. But and she Paige. wait, she wasn't the Oh, she wasn't. So Juan lost. Oh, Juan bet that she would at some point be a cast member. I hate okay. all of yes. this. Okay. Oh, okay. I need to address so, this. We're I would saying, totally no, go I'm not through. done. I'm uh, okay. not done. We're saying okay. like Short shorts, black tank top, love bites, AJ Lee. With some, like, you get some bracelets and I'll stuff. Put some, I gotta <laughs> put some leggings on at least, man, because it's gonna be that's cold cool. in there. But <laughs> is that's that, cool. That might be worse <laughs> if you're wearing leggings. <laughs> Dude, but you know what? I got some hairy legs, you, man. man. <laughs> oh my you God. Do you. Okay, all I'll say is, gang, I sincerely thought that these two guys forgot about this just like ryan forgot about a bet a while ago but hey i never forgot <laughs> but we forced him into it to actually commit to the uh the uh, result so the least that i can do is also do it yeah i paid up on my bets so you damn well better pay up on yours so okay the least you guys can, or that are listening right now can do is then tweet us i need to see some i need to see an insane amount of tweets to go like, okay, people are people want to see this happen. I don't know why you want to see this. Why do you want to see pictures of this? Please, like, don't come up to me. Hey, Juan from Bite That. <laughs> nice legs, man. Yeah, if you're going to Mania, make sure to get a picture with Juan while oh he's my in God. this cosplay okay, Ryan, attire. End the, show. end the show. Thank you, everybody, <laughs> for the questions. Let's stop giving people ideas. Oh, my God, I hate myself right now. All right. Well, then I think that's a good note to end it on. Juan hates himself. We want to thank you guys for listening to another edition of the Bite That Podcast. Thank you guys for listening. We all love you so much. And uh, if you want to see some more content from us if you can't get enough then head over to the youtube channel youtube.com slash bite that up now for early access patrons you can see our smackdown 2 gameplay video play that is what we like to call the series that'll be up for everybody else this coming friday one also one got, got his jerky on he ate some <laughs> some beef jerky <laughs> Not so, uh, jr's leave. jerky and, uh, yeah, he got a little jerky from JR, and he did a review oh, of that. No. So, you can go check that video out. <laughs> um, what do you yep, like that's all there. <laughs> yep, and, uh... <laughs> oh, oh man, I just... I just heard it. So, if you God, want some God, God all after my, that... As yeah. God is my <laughs> witness, he's been broken in half. Yep. Oh, that man had a family. Good yeah. God! Good God! Good so if you God. want to ask a question for the show or, or just communicate with us, Twitter's at ByteThatCast, ByteThat.com if you want to enter the uh, BT Crate giveaway. It ends this weekend, right? December 7th. It's, uh, that is, uh, Monday? That's next Wednesday. Next yeah, Wednesday. Next Wednesday, okay. yeah. December 7th is the last day to enter that, so make sure to head over to BiteThat.com. There's multiple ways to get entries into that, so check that out. Uh, I think it's time to end the show, so Just thank go. you guys so much for Just listening. Go. We will see you next week. NXT TakeOver, guys. NXT TakeOver. It's the only answer. 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 The 